So El Supremo, the one-time Cuban dictator Fidel Castro. What's he up to? I, I find this very interesting. What I find particularly interesting is the way that the American media, by and large, in contrast with the way that European media has been covering the comments and, more importantly, the actions of Fidel Castro recently. I think perhaps emblematic of the way that the American media is covering it is how Dan, Dan Gaynor is writing about it. Dan is the T. Boone Pickens Free Market Fellow over at the Business and Media Institute, businessandmedia.org, and the vice president of said organization. Dan, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to be back. It's very rare that I would say that I'm that anything I write is emblematic of the American media, but let's go for it. <laughs> I, you know, I, yeah, I get it. But you know, you said uh, what Cuba is finally showing is that communism is dying officially on Earth. I agree with you. Uh, you know, I think that the, the the old form of communism, the Marxist communism, that uh, Castro tried to implement, that the Soviet Union ar- arguably for a short time implemented, uh, I, you know, it got taken over by Stalin, it turned into a dictatorship. Same thing in China, it's a dictatorship. It doesn't work. It didn't work. It's it's not working. And Castro said he's going to let go a half million to a million state workers. You've got all that in your story, right? You want to comment on that? Well, I mean, I'm, I, I mean, first of all, it, it is good news for for Cubans. I, I very well, I I agree, and so does Castro. Yeah, I do say, but you know, it doesn't solve a lot of the problems that are that are Cuba. I mean, Cuba still has all the worst things of communism. It still is a dictatorship. It still is a place where people who try for free speech get locked up, as opposed to being allowed to be free. And they don't even have a free market where you know that. Is built up so that they, if they let these 500,000 people go, there's actually jobs out there for them. I mean, the Cuban government runs everything from you know healthcare to barber shops. So you know it's not like there's a, a hefty amount of free market enterprise in the in the country. Yeah, and well, and historically that's been the case. But do you, you know that barber shops and beauty salons, for example, are one of the one of the industries. Oddly enough, you, you just mentioned that that earlier this year Castro gave to their owners said, okay, you, you can run this. He has uh, handed two and a half million acres of land over to individuals to run as, as small farms or as cooperatives. They are basically, I think that what he's doing, he's not, you know, the, 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 the media in this country, and frankly, your article, Dan, characterized this as Castro has suddenly become a capitalist. There's no capitalism in this at all. There's, there's no investment capital. Um, you know, capitalism is where you make money with money, not with labor. What Castro is doing is the Spanish model the the the, uh, the this is the last chapter of my new book uh, rebooting the american dream in fact is it's called in the shadow of the dragon the mondragon Co- cooperatives it, spain has the largest number of cooperatives i believe in the world and mondragon is uh, you know 5 billion 6 billion dollar a year co-op where the workers own it the ceo makes three times what the lowest paid janitor makes and all the decisions are made by the workers not by management i mean management reflects the will of the workers not the other way around and that's so when, what that, when people only make twenty dollars a week which is a the, the you know the cuban model right now or twenty dollars a month i think it is uh, you know you basically you know there's no capital out there for them to be capitalists but they, they're certainly heading that direction while at the same time we're heading the other direction but they're not heading in that we're direction a long way apart. They're, they're not heading in that direction they're heading in the direction of cooperatives no, rather than it's, corporations it's they're giving. They're giving. I mean, this is just a first step. You're talking about a nation that that has nothing, so they're going to taking the first step. Once sooner or later, we both know that that you know the our our uh, problems with Cuba will be solved because Castro's will die off. And eventually, you know, the, the American embargo will probably end. At that point, they will encounter capitalism. And when they do, just as the communist Chinese have encountered it, the Soviet Union encountered it, and they will embrace parts of it. Well, it's, what's it's happening, though, it, it is very interesting. What's, what's happening in Russia, what's happening in China, is that they're discovering that when they implement capitalism in a laissez-faire mode, in the, in the way that the Chicago boys went into the Soviet Union as it was collapsing and said, or you know, what is now Russia, and said, here's how to do it. And and Poland and Hungary and many of those other countries. And I was there when this was going on. And I was there and the you know several times I've been back to those countries in the years in the initial years after that after the fall of the Soviet Union. And it just you know devastated them. This laissez-faire capitalism is that they're discovering that regulated capitalism and cooperative movements actually work. And that's what Castro's promoting. Well, no, he's he's not he's not promoting that, but he's stepping. He's stepping promoting one. he's promoting cooperatives, Dan. He's he's yeah. building co-ops no, all over the country. You know, for us to move 
Uh, we have regulated capitalists, and we have probably too much regulation by a long shot, and certainly in certain industries, because a lot of it doesn't solve anything. It just creates new problems. But to look at their, look at, it's good to see a country that was so unfree take a little step toward freedom, but it would be a lot better to see our country that used to be a lot more free taking those steps as well. Wait a minute. Are you saying that the freedom of of a corporation to buy up all of their competitors and then become so monopolistic that they can squash any little company that appears like a bug, that that's, that the, 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 the okay. quote, freedom to have monopoly capitalism no, is you're, you're freedom? You're leaving on one random kind of bizarre example to say that that's what I'm saying. No, but we used to have more economic freedom in this country How? than we do now. We used to have, frankly, a lot less either regulation or just even just crazy tax laws. Trying to get just any small business or any even individual navigating the tax system in this country is onerous. And you look at some of the Eastern European nations, they've gone toward flat tax, they've gone toward solutions that are trying to keep government out of their lives at least a little bit more. That's a a good direction to go. We're heading the other direction. Cuba, remarkably, is heading the correct direction at least a little bit. So, Dan, are you going to join me in calling for let's go back to the way it used to be? Let's go back to the Eisenhower Republican days where Eisenhower openly, I mean, it was a platform. This was the 1954 Republican Party platform said the Republican Party supports the right of organized labor to unionize in all environments and supports the 91 percent income tax. Uh, no, I do not support the 91 percent income tax. I actually, uh, were, I would be supporting a flat tax with a, a very high floor. So you want to you want to jack up the taxes people. on working people and reduce the taxes no, on rich it people? It wouldn't jack up the taxes on working people with a high floor. It wouldn't. It actually end up being both um, equal to every single person, but it would also be progressive at the higher end. But every so it would satisfy your goal. And satisfy my goal. Yeah, except that, except, and that's part of the problem. Well, uh, let's not let's not, not let's not debate that tax. I mean, yeah. I, that's that's we're just going to be you know like a dog chasing its tail. I just I just find this fascinating. What's happening in Cuba? That uh, he's allowing private family based businesses. Thirty of our restaurants. He says some with a good image, others less so, have been selected to become cooperatives, and their presidents have been named. They are creating cooperatives all over that country. Yeah. Don't you but get Dan? How I mean, we've got some massive cooperatives in the United States, and yeah. they work really really well. Wouldn't you like to see more cooperatives in America, more worker-owned businesses, and fewer businesses that are owned by people like, you know, say, for example, Saudi sheikhs, like the guy who owns 6 or 7% of Fox News? As a free society, if people want to form cooperatives, they can legally do it. Go right ahead. But what you're talking about, the problem with the Cuban model here is it's the top-down model where the government is mandating these cooperatives. But that's what he's walking away from. No, no, he's he's giving them the land. He's giving away two and a half million acres of land. And he's saying, you guys, you know, you can start your own cooperative. You can elect your own president. You can run it yourself. Right, but with that... No more central control. government, Government took it in the first place. So now government's giving it to the people, but basically that under their system... Well, government's, government's create corporations too, Dan. Yeah. But their society, their government has already taken stuff away from people. Our so government the authorizes the existence of corporations. We authorize the existence of cooperatives. They're now expanding to authorize the existence of cooperatives. This seems like a really great thing. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. It's, I mean, I, you know, I think we're both so will you call? Will you join me in calling for more cooperatives in the United States? That's up to the people involved. That's, that's like you and I for, decide to form a corporation. It's up to us. You know, that's, that's perfectly a free society. That's what people get to do. That's something Cubans haven't had for a long time, thanks to Congress. Yeah, well, and, and now Castro is, is giving it to them, I, I, or backing away from taking it away from them. Let's, yeah, let's, I think, uh, I think let's that's change the frame a little bit. Backing away from taking away from them. Okay. Dan Gaynor, businessandmedia.org is the website. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Always, always, uh, always fast. <laughs> always great talking with you, frankly. For more on this and other topics, please visit TomHartman.com.